What is the gift of healing? Is the gift of healing still in effect today or has it gone away? Well, let's say one thing up front. God heals. He's the same God as he was yesterday, the same God that he is today. He has the same power. And so if he wants to heal, he can heal. As a matter of fact, he still does heal. I don't think that anyone would have any sort of credibility to come and say that God does not heal. The question is, does God use man? Does God heal through man? So when we talk about healing and specifically a biblical healing, we want to also one identify and differentiate between a spiritual healing and a physical healing. We are speaking about a physical healing right now. And what we mean by healing, by God's healing, we mean a supernatural, immediate, thorough, and complete healing, whereas God gets the credit. Now, I'll talk about the God gets the credit part in just a little bit, but I want to make sure that we're speaking about how God heals versus how others have been healed over time. Now, that's not to say that God is not in the healing or in the lives of people who are going through things over the course of time and then ultimately get healed and that God does not get credit. God ultimately gets credit. However, we're speaking about this supernatural one-time move. And the question is, does that still occur? Well, yes, but does it happen at the hands or through a man? Before we continue, we want to make it also clear why God heals. God can simply heal anyone and everyone if he wants to. The question is, why doesn't he? Why are only certain people healed? Why is it that Jesus goes through a crowd and would bump into hundreds of people and one or two people get healed? Clearly, there are going to be others that have needs for healing. Why does this blind person get healed? Why does this mute person heal? Well, ultimately, everything is to bring God his glory. Think about the man who was born blind. The man who was born blind, a couple things. One, didn't know Jesus, two, didn't have faith, but three, it was visible so that everyone could see that this was being done. And so Jesus says that he was born this way so that the power of God would be demonstrated in him. And what happened? His name was carried about because of this healing. Oftentimes today, we will see people that will come out and just outright lie and say that they have the gift of healing and they in turn would get credit. A couple things about that. Usually, if not always, these particular healings are never complete, never thorough, never immediate, and there's no verification. And then almost always, God might have a mention in the credits, but ultimately the person who we are being told is doing the healing is the one that gets the pat on the back. So if there is no glorification of God, then you can rest assured God is not in it. Now, as we're talking about this healing, the question is, is faith required for healing? And I want to go to a couple of passages that people, I think, misunderstand what's happening as though you have to have faith to be healed because some will tell you that if you're not healed, it's because you didn't have faith. In Matthew 13, 58, notice what it says, and he did not do many miracles because of their unbelief. Now, this is Jesus speaking, saying that a prophet such as him is not received in his own hometown. In Luke 6, 4, he says, Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his, in his hometown and among his own relatives and in his own household. And he says, and he could do no miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he wondered at their unbelief. He's not saying that he could not do anything because of their unbelief. Remember, there are four friends who bring a man and let him down through a house. And it wasn't his faith. It was their faith. He didn't have belief. They did. It's not saying that Jesus or the Lord can't do that without their faith. He can do what he wants to irrespective of your faith. Remember, we see people who are healed who don't have faith. We see the lepers. They didn't have faith. We see the blind men. We see mute people. We see people who are dead. How do people who are physically dead have faith to be raised? They don't. What his point is, is that he is come to Israel to save Israel, and they did not have faith, and he marveled at that. But notice what it says. It said that the Bible says that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them, even in the other passage. So we see him able to do so, it's the issue of him willing to do so, wanting to do so. Why? So that God might get glory. If God heals and then doesn't get glory, well, then that takes away the point, the purpose for actually doing the healing. And if you don't have faith in him, if you're not going to believe in him, well, then there is no purpose to do the healing because there will be no glory that will be given to God because of their unbelief. The next question is, are we guaranteed to be healed even with faith? Are we guaranteed to be healed? And there's a couple of passages that some, I think, mistranslate or misunderstand to take that we are definitely guaranteed. One such passage, and it builds off of another passage, but 1 Peter 
2.23 says, And while being reviled, he did not revile in return, and while suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judged righteously. Now, verse 24, And he himself, that is Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. Now, the question is, is he speaking about a physical healing? Well, the context of this has to do with a spiritual healing. Notice what he says. He bore our sins in his body on the cross. So, or in order that, that we might die to sin. For by his stripes, or for by his wounds. So he's saying the reason for that. So because of these wounds, we are healed. This word that's used for heal can be used to connote a physical healing, something with your arm or your chest or your leg or your head. But it's also used to talk about a spiritual healing. And where we get this from is in Isaiah 53. In Isaiah 53, we talk about this healing, what's going to happen. And this is in regards to Israel. Notice what he says in chapter 53, verse 4. Surely our griefs he himself bore. So notice what he's speaking about. Our griefs he himself has bore and our sorrows he's carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Notice the past tense verb. He's speaking of Israel, how in the future Israel is going to look back. And so we can kind of see when this is brought up in First Peter, what he's speaking about. He's speaking about a spiritual healing. He said, but we, but he was, past tense, pierced through for our transgression. He was crushed, past tense, for our iniquities. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him. And some verses might say, but by his stripes, we are healed. And by his scourging, we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall upon him. So he's speaking about a spiritual issue. And so the healing is going to be spiritual. As a matter of fact, another passage that gets brought up and people think that this is speaking about a physical healing. This is in James 5.13. Now, notice and see if this makes sense to you, how he says what he's saying, what he says, what the result is. Because this is the Lord saying these are the things that are going to happen. Is anyone among you suffering? This can be physical. It can be mental, emotional. It can be any sort of suffering. Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Now, I want you to see if this is a physical healing. See if this works 100% of the time, because that's the implication here. Is anyone among you sick? And again, this word is used for physical sickness as well as a spiritual. Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore him. This word so say is that it will happen. So he will be restored, the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven. Now the question is, is he speaking about a physical sickness or a spiritual? Well, if it's a physical sickness, well then we've got a problem because that means this person will be healed. And notice it's not even dependent upon the faith of the person that is being or having hands laid on him, the one that's being prayed over. Uh, I think it does require this person to have faith uh, because it's the prayer that's prayed in faith. I think it necessarily has to be a spiritual sickness we're talking about because that person who makes this prayer in faith, this happens 100% of the time. How many of us have prayed for someone or been prayed for we felt as though we had faith. We thought others did. There's no way that you can know what others thought or felt. And then there was no healing. How many times in the Bible do we see people who we know have the Holy Spirit and pray and the people still don't get healed? Think about Paul. Paul wrote almost half of the New Testament and Trophimus was not healed. He tells Timothy to take some wine. There are people who just don't get healed for whatever the reason is. And as God tells Paul, he says, my grace is sufficient. So sometimes that's all you need. You won't get healed. And so going back to this, he says that they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins one to another. Why are we confessing sins? Is that a, is that a prerequisite for physical healing? It hasn't been in the past. We didn't see people being healed physically because of them professing their sins. But the only way that you can be healed spiritually is if you profess, confess your sins. And so in this case, he has to be speaking about a spiritual sickness. And if this prayer offered in faith by the person, that's the only way that you can be saved. That's the only way that you can be healed. And so this is not stating that a person is definitely going to be healed. There is no such belief 
or standard in the Bible where a person is always going to be healed 100% of the time unless it's the Lord's will. Jesus is the only person that we know that has a 100% track record. Whomever he desired to heal, they were healed. So the question is, what about the gift of healing? Can a person have a specific gifting on him? Well, today we don't really see it a lot. We see a lot of claims, but we don't see a lot of evidence. We don't see a lot of validation. Not that we don't see a lot of evidence of people being healed. We're not saying that. We're saying about someone being healed at the hand of someone else. I don't go as far as others to say that the gift of healing or God working through someone's hands uh, is done away with. I believe that however God wants to heal, he can. And if God so chooses to use someone's hand, then amen. If a person were to go and to pray over someone who is sick and they touch that person and that person is healed, well, who did that? The Lord did. But if a person feels that they are unable to do so, I would say tread lightly, be cautious, because what you don't want to do is to bring a reproach to the name of the Lord because you are saying that you have this particular gift. Again, not even Paul could heal on command. Not even Peter, whomever could heal whenever, whomever they want to. We hear a lot of miraculous claims, but we don't see a lot of miraculous results at the hands of people. We do see these results at the hands of God, irrespective and separate of man. And so for that reason, I think that the possibility is still there. I won't foreclose that, but I think we need to be diligent and I think we need to be firm in making sure that this is not someone that's just saying something because every time in the Bible that God moved, every time that a healing occurred, every time that a miracle occurred, everyone knew, not just the believers, but even the unbelievers knew. That's not really what we typically see today when someone claims something. Not only do we have the unbelievers not believing, we have a lot of believers not believing. And that's just not how the spirit moved in the Bible. So I want to leave you with this one thing that we should all do, regardless of who you are. Paul tells us to do something. And I think this particular passage is a problem because we are not reading this passage correctly. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. 1. Paul says, pursue love. That's the command. Deokate is in the imperative. So we are to pursue love. That's the command. And in doing so, what he says to also earnestly desire or to desire the spiritual. Notice in the English, the gift, the word gifts is italicized. Why? Because the word gifts is not there. So what should you desire? You should desire the things of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Why? In order that you prophesy or in order that you, this word here is to tell or to inform or to give a revelation, to give what God wants us to get. Because ultimately, what are we trying to do? We are trying to spread the Lord about the earth. That is our job. And so what you ought to desire is the spiritual. The word that's used there in the Greek is the Greek word pneumatikon. It's not the spiritual gifts. It's the word pneumatikon or pneumatikon. And the reason for that is because as you desire that, however the Lord wants to move in you is how the Lord is going to move in you. We don't determine, we don't tell how the Lord should move. We can't make the Lord cause us to prophesy. We can't um, cause the Lord or you have the Lord to cause us to heal or to raise the dead. Only how he works. We've seen times where certain people's efforts in the Bible did not work because they were not in line with God. And so if a person is pursuing love, as we're told, and desire the things of the spirit or the spiritual or the Holy Spirit itself, because it's really not so much the gift of the spirit. It really is the gift that is the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And as he works in you, then whatever he wants to do, especially you being willing and you you being submitted to him, he's going to work. As a matter of fact, he's going to work irrespective of you, with you or without you. And so when we say what the gift of healing is, it is always immediate. It is always thorough. It's always complete. And it leaves no doubt that God has done this. Amen.